There is a country in the world, the population of this country makes up just 0.07% of the world's population, where they aim to be the first and the best in many things. Finland is rated one of the most stable countries in the world and together with its neighbors, it's one of the freest countries in the world. According to the International Police Science Association that issues the World Internal Security and Police Index, Finnish police and internal security as a whole are second best in the world. Well, maybe this is why the country, according to the World Economic Forum in 2018, has also the least organized crime in the world. And when I look at Finland's first list, I could go on and on and on. But what's more important is that Finland is also known as a country where they develop and embrace new, interesting, critical communications technologies. Finland is one of the first countries in the world that implemented the country-wide critical communications network based on the famous Tetrak technology. This narrowband technology is still successful in operation under the name Virve. Virve is mainly used by the Finnish police, fire and ambulance services, as well as by other emergency responder organizations across the entire country. But what happens when a Finnish company that's a specialist in smart and secure devices, smartphones, teams up with another Finnish company that is a renewed specialist of managed services? When those companies partner, you know that something interesting is happening and not just with a focus on the Finnish market. So now, 20 years after the first countrywide tetra network was implemented, the Finnish government is ready to take the next leap forward. The next step into the broadband era, where they serve the Finnish emergency services with a broadband critical communications network for voice and data. And this is exactly the moment where both Bitim and Milok have waited for. So coming back to the interview, a few weeks back I had an online meeting with two of the key people that are responsible for this innovative approach. Manus Kita from Milok a company that is a strategic partner to the Finnish Defence Force, providing maintenance and repair services, and Anders Bergal from Bitium. And that's a company that specializes in military radio and communication solution products for the Finnish military, but also actors within the emergency response services all over the world. Both companies are working together in presenting a unique proposition to the Finnish government for Verva 2 that started procurement last October. According to the tender documents, this project should so somewhere go live in 2022. So in my interview with Manu and Anders, we take a look at the devices used in the new ecosystem compared to the devices that are currently in use, the Tetra devices. We talk about centralized services complementing elements of both organizations and if the new proposed ecosystem could be implemented in other countries amongst others. So let's quickly go back to the interview, uh, which I recorded recently in order to find out more about this whole project, about this whole interesting project, actually. And Anders, I think I want to kick off with you because when we talk about the ecosystem of devices for the broadband era going forward, uh, we talk about the smartphone, the Bitium smartphone, Tough Mobile 2. Uh, in cooperation with, uh, with with all kinds of possibilities, accessories, uh, applications, software, and so on. What is your proposition? What is the actually? What is the difference between LTE and Tetra uh, with regards to public safety communications? Going, you know, when you look at the new proposition from Bitium and Milo. Yeah, I, I would say that it used to be a lot uh, like box moving before, talking about the terminal, the terminal in focus, when we were talking about Tetra technology. Now, when the evolution is going towards uh, broadband and we are starting to talk about smartphones like Tough Mobile 2, uh, we immediately see a need for a complete ecosystem around the device itself, which is extremely important, but at the same time, pretty challenging to manage. And um, Bitium as a device manufacturer and producer needs some help from some other companies in order to build a end-to-end -end 
uh, proposition for our customers. And that's actually the background and reason why we opened the dialogue uh, with Virvetuotet and Palvelut more than a year ago and entered into a uh, cooperation with them. Uh, so what we are aiming is to create a one-stop shopping place for the critical communication users and public safety operators, not only in Finland, but also on a global scale. Yeah, and when I look at uh, the heritage of Bitium, uh, way back we talk about Electrobit, you have so many years experience already as a company. Um, I was reading your book, by the way, it was in Finnish. I could read a little bit with Google Translate. But uh, so that background, together with the background of Milok, is pretty strong, is it? Yeah, I would say so. Um, when we when we look at the evolution of the critical communication towards LTE, we, we see that there are kind of two worlds uh, colliding or maybe complementing each other and the other uh, angle is the world from where Milog and Bitium is coming so the critical communication and the tactical communication and the other angle of course is the is the COTS world uh, with the devices uh, let's say normal everyday devices and and as we see it there's place and user segments for both of these categories but we together with Milok are representing very, very strongly this tactical and public safety and critical communication background. Yeah, and you guys had a long way to, to, to learn and to understand the public safety community, of course, because you already are involved at the late 90s when there was the first Tetra network established worldwide. That was in Finland, was it? I guess it was, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and as, as, as Milok now a year ago bought the Virve Tuotteet ja Palvelut, which is now completely owned by Milok, from, from our perspective, we already knew that the change that regarding the technologies, that's, that's happening, so so that's that's not a surprise for us, and, and looking from ecosystem point of view, from our perspective, it's the key thing is to, to kind of widen the ecosystem, to, to have more parties joining the ecosystem, to have a complete offering for, for our end users and customers. Manu, if you look at the offering, um, you together working with Bitium on one centralized space for companies purchasing equipment, uh, services, uh, and so on, would that be beneficial to the end user or would the end user not be very happy with purchasing his services and products and solutions from different end users? What is your thought about that? Absolutely, I think it's it's beneficial for, for the end user and for the end customer. Looking at now the kind of whole technological change from moving from from legacy tetra system into an lte based uh, wider ecosystem we have more opportunities for devices applications accessories and so on and looking from customer perspective i think it's, it's absolutely necessary to be able to have a, have a partner who can basically customize the, so, the whole solution for you instead of kind of shopping from different different sources uh, most of the customers don't have that kind of uh, resource and time available uh, to, to do that. So that's, I think, it's it's really a key issue to have a provider who can provide uh, the holistic solution for 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 the customer. So Manu, this is also out of efficiency reasons. Yeah, absolutely, a absolutely. And and uh, looking at if, if instead of kind of buying from from let's say ten to twenty providers, you can have a basically one one provider kind of a building you the solution, selling you the solution, and then providing, make sure everything works. And, yeah. and I think it's definitely for efficiency point of view from, from customer perspective. What are the complementing elements in this ecosystem with regards to the device? Anders, would, would you be able to um, give me some insights on Manu? I can take it first here. Uh, I come to think immediately uh, about the applications because we have seen here during the, the, the past months uh, that uh, the MCX, so mission critical applications and let's say the mission critical PTT application especially is something which is extremely important for the users and um, in general the applications will be many on the devices in the future because, because uh, and that's something totally new which did not exist in the in the 
old ecosystem uh, in the Tetra world. Uh, somebody has to manage these applications. Somebody has to know uh, which are good and allowed and which are not. So black and white listing of applications which are taken on board to the terminals for different user segments. But that's um, a very big responsibility, is it? It is, it is, definitely, yes. And who the party will be uh, in real life is uh, still remain to be seen, but Virve uh, and Palvelut is definitely one potential candidate for, for a role like this. Will the whole proposition with smart devices, as we're talking about the BitChip Tough Mobile 2, will that not be too difficult for the end user to understand that whole ecosystem when they're used to only a radio with a few knobs? I think it might be might might be difficult for the customer to understand all the possibilities, all the options that uh, are available. I think in that way also, it's really important to have kind of a one-stop shop that you have a partner who can basically proactively say, "Hey, regarding your needs, uh, this is the combination that that you would would, would serve you the best and would, would work for you." And I think that's 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 a key thing. I think definitely not all the customers are in in that way up to date that they they know what 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 possibilities what options will there be in the future i think that training will be a very big thing with this transition don't you think so absolutely absolutely i think training is is a key so so there will be a lot of applications a lot more devices accessories and and how everything works together i think it's, it's training is, is a key so definitely so we have to keep in mind that uh this new technology is bringing along also the possibility to move a lot of data, huge amount of data, which means picture, video, which has not been possible before. So um, it will dramatically change. And and when you get mentioned about the, the, the legacy, what the users have towards the devices, yes, that's absolutely true because sometimes the requirements for an LTE smartphone are quite uh, interesting uh, because there should be a mechanical knob for changing the channel. There should be an external antenna like in the legacy radios. Um, these kind of things are coming up uh, which are actually realized in a different way in the modern terminals. And, and usability will be a will be a key. So yeah. Also, what comes yeah. to accessories. So you you kind of it's using the smart device kind of out of your pocket might be difficult. So all the all the accessories helping the usability of of the applications and the, and the devices will be also kind of in a, in a key role. Yeah. So accessories will become more important than ever maybe in this case. Could that be Absolutely. right? Yeah. 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 The, the, let's say the Bidium Tough Mobile Two. Um, a strategy is that uh, we have one base terminal and that terminal will be uh, variated uh, with the help of the accessories uh, which are then uh, complying with the requirements of the separate uh, and various user segments so one base variation done with the accessories around that one base if I say the terminal will become just the hub, is that a good good thought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that. You could say that. Yes, mm -hmm. because there are so many different needs. Okay, we're taught and the public knows better the the field of different users, but all the user segments have their specific needs. There, fireman have his needs, the policeman his, and and the hospital worker nurse doctors have their own needs so um the device how great would it be that for those yeah how great would it be that for those different end users you have different accessories that fulfill that need right yeah absolutely exactly and as you said the, the, the smart device itself acting as a hub kind of, uh, i think that's that's well 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 said of course, we, we have not been partnering with with Finnish Finnish uh, companies providing Finnish solutions. That's that's one part. Kind of a 
uh, providing a distribution channel for the Finnish company for Finnish customers, but also uh, if looking at the, at the holistically the whole whole new that uh, Virve 2.0 in, in Finland, uh, there might be new new providers, new OEMs coming to the market, so that might need a kind of a distribution channel in Finland. I think that's that's one option. And but also coming yeah. back to your yeah coming back to your original question regarding the uh, the kind of um, what was your original question? <laughs> <laughs> About the ecosystems in partners, About, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the partners, uh, looking from, from kind of a sales and distribution channel point of view, the kind of a, the number of partners, we, we've been able to survive earlier with the legacy, with, with about, let's say, three to four kind of uh, partners from our perspective. But definitely that will at least double, kind of looking at different kind of applications, devices, and accessories needed. So I think from our perspective, I would say, six to ten maybe in, in the future well would it not also be dependent on the country where you do your proposition uh Absolutely. what kind of local players are there that could strengthen your proposition finally down the line yeah, yeah. definitely yes yeah. okay yeah and of course the, the the set of skills the the partner is having i mean one might be enough in some countries there might be need of uh several but uh there's also also um an issue i can think about which is extremely important also in the future, which is also a legacy thing, but that's the support and maintenance and the repair of the devices, which is for the authorities and the user segments extremely important that it exists and it's fast and working and reliable. When we're looking at many of the end users around the world today, they are using LMR, well, legacy systems. Uh, they are thinking about moving to this new broadband era with new devices, new possibilities, but there is something in between. And I think that is very important. So how's the, how does that fit your, your offerings, actually? What are your thoughts about that? Because I think end users looking at this video would like to understand, would like to know for sure that there is a smooth transition from one technology into the other technology. Yeah, absolutely, and that that you are absolutely right because it 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 doesn't happen overnight. That's for sure. It will take years this transition, and uh, all these ecosystems have to work also during that transition period. So, I think it's extremely important that uh, the terminal providers and and also uh, the supporting uh, parties knows the legacy but also the future technology and combining those two things is enabling also this intermediate period in between these two technologies so i think also their bitum and vtp is a very very strong player yeah absolutely and we we discuss with our customers and i, I think the kind of a transition period is, is a key thing we're talking about five to ten years even uh, where there will be kind of a two worlds. Your legacy system will be working and active, and and the kind of a kind of a step by step, the kind of a new LTE will be in place with new applications and and uh, options. And I think from customer perspective, making that as transition as easy as possible, not to carry just kind of a just an additional one or two devices, but kind of a making that a transition as smooth as possible. And I think there we can help together with Bit Team regarding our customers. And also, I think we're in a good position to discuss that with, with all the providers. Hey, we have a customer uh, where this, this is an issue, so, so how can we find a solution that helps the customer within a, the finding a smooth transition from, from Virve 1.0 to 2.0? Like we earlier mentioned, that the amount of data is increasing dramatically. Uh, cybersecurity is something which is going to play a major role uh, in the authority communication in the future and um, there of course we come to the software and uh, back-end softwares and selling that as and providing that as services to the customers mm -hmm. because that's a very very critical part of the whole ecosystem and I think as then there especially I think the combination of Milok and Virve Tuotteet and Palvo will be a good since we are already kind of in, in that kind of cybersecurity world with, with the Finnish defense forces. So I think that's that's definitely one strong point when Milok as an owner of, of Virve Tuotteet and Palvo can kind of provide a bit of additional uh, in that combination. 
would the Fever 2.0 be the first initiative that you're offering uh, this proposition to, or have you already proposed this to other uh, projects around the world already? Yeah, of course we have we have worked uh, more more than a year, one and a half year already with Virvetuotte uh, and Palvelut, and of course we have had dialogues uh, towards uh, various customers at the at the moment. And uh, but of course we are looking at Virvetuotte 2.0 as 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 a as a big opportunity uh, in the in the future. And uh, and on a global scale. Um, Virvetuotte and Paulut acts, of course, here in Finland only at the moment, uh, but we have similar partnerships um, around the world. And uh, of course, our aim is to, 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 to create here in Finland a benchmark, uh, because as everybody knows, we are forerunners here in Finland when it comes to telecom and critical communication. And uh, of course, then copy the same concept globally in other countries as well. Okay, others, Manu, thank you very much for explaining your proposition to the Finnish market with Broadband 2.0 for Verve, but also for a global scale. Uh, I think everybody's really looking forward to see what your next project will be, which country, which cooperation with what other company, uh, to have a very strong proposition on, on broadband uh, going forward for critical communication. So again, thank you very much for your time and I look forward to speaking to you on one of the upcoming events whenever that is possible, right? Absolutely, looking forward to that. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you.